Uh, we're going to be turning to a couple different books this evening. Uh, we're going to be in the ninth chapter in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 9, and then we're also um, going to be in uh, Psalms 6. And I'll also be turning to Psalm 9 also at the very end, but uh, our, our main main places is going to be Mark 9 and Psalms 6. Give everybody a moment to turn there. Uh, tonight's title to the message is, And It Came to Pass. Before we get started, we'll open up with a word of prayer. Lord, we want to come to you tonight, God, as we open up your word. Uh, Lord, help us, God, to humbly and faithfully give out your word. Uh, Lord, we pray that, that we would just receive from you tonight the things you would have us to receive, God, that our hearts would grow ever more closer to your Son. Uh, God, use this, Lord, for your glory above everything. We ask it in Jesus' name, and amen. And it came to pass, is the title of this message. Um, this is just a, a very simple uh, message that we want to look at tonight, but the, the point of it is to look at these scriptures this evening and understand that the, the different phases that we go through in life are ups and downs, um, as the Bible says, and it came to pass. You know, sometimes when we're up on a mountaintop, we forget what it's like to be down in a valley. And so we're up on this mountaintop, and we think, well, you know, this is great, and it's wonderful, and it is. But we forget that eventually we're going to have to come down off that mountaintop. And we forget what it's like when we were in the valley. And so then when we get in the valley, we're in deep despair. We think, well, why am I not on the mountain where I was a day, two days, three days ago, a week ago? Why am I not there? I seem so far removed from that mountaintop that I was on where I wanted to be, and I'm, I'm down in this valley, and I don't feel close to God. I feel like I'm, I'm battling. I feel like I'm struggling. You know, why am I here? We, we forget what the valley is like sometimes when we're on the mountaintop. And on the flip side of that, when we're in the valley of despair, whatever that might be in your life or my life, we forget what the mountaintop's like. We forget about God's blessings. We forget about those things. We get so caught up and focused on the problems that we're facing at hand that we forget what the mountaintop is like. And so the point of this message is to remember and be reminded that there are ebbs and flows in our walk with God. There are times to be on the mountain. But there are also times that we will be in the valley as well, and those things are normal. And we want to keep that phrasing in mind throughout our life, and it came to pass. You know, when we're up on the mountaintop, yes, enjoy the mountaintop. Yes, enjoy the, the blessings of God, the sweet fellowship that we feel, the, the ease of being on the mountain. But don't forget that it will pass. We will not be on the mountaintop all the time. And when we are in the valley, and you know, it seems like the mountaintop experience, it's, it feels to us like those times are much shorter than the time we spend in the valley. A lot of times it's feel, it feels like the times that we are in the valley, it feels like it drags on forever, but that's because we don't enjoy it. But when we are upon the mountaintop, let us not forget, it will come to pass. There will come a time that we are in the valley. And then when we get to the valley, let us remember and look back to the mountain and say, Yes, I was there and I will be there again because this will come to pass. It won't last forever. And so the, the scriptures on my mind tonight, uh, we're going to look at the transfiguration of Jesus in Mark chapter 9. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and jump in there. Uh, it tells us here in the second verse of Mark 9, And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. You know, I want to stop right there for, for just a second. And obviously this is speaking of a real 
physical presence on a mountain of them along with Jesus, but I cannot help but think of the, the spiritual meaning that is here also. You know, sometimes when you're up on the mountain, it feels like you're apart with him. It's just you and him, and it's wonderful, and it's great. And the Bible says that when they were there, it says he was transfigured before them. That is, they caught with their human eyes uh, his holiness and his righteousness and his, the fact that he is eternally God. They caught that with their human eyes in a way that they hadn't before. It says in the verse, uh, third verse, it says, And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as so, snow, so as no, no fuller on earth can white them. He was just transformed right before their eyes, this, this shiningness. They seen his righteousness there. It says it was such a bright white. There, there's no whiter white than this upon the earth than what they seen right here. And you know, I thought about when, when we're up on that mountain with God and when things are just going great, when things seem like they're easy and we're not stressed out about anything and there's just not really any problems and we're up on top of that mountain and it just feels like you're right there with God and everything's great spiritually and there's no struggles spiritually, there's no struggles mentally and all these things. It's like you get a, a glimpse of Jesus, a glimpse of our Father in a way that we sometimes don't uh, when we're down in the valley. And we enjoy this mountain. Um, as they were there, they were seeing all this. And not only did they see that, but it says, And then appeared unto them Elias or Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. So you can imagine um, these were, you know, Elijah and Moses were huge, huge heroes to Peter, James, and John. And you can imagine what this must have been like for them. They are seeing the Savior, the one they've been following. They see him as his raiment becomes shining white. They see Elijah and Moses there with him, talking with them. I don't know how they recognize them. I don't know. Um, we're not really told, but for whatever reason, they knew that it was Elijah and Moses. And it was just amazing to them. And notice what Peter says. He says, And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. You know, isn't that always how we feel when we're on the mountain? It's good to be here. We, we like that. I like that. Um, there's, no, there's no other place I'd rather be than on the mountaintop with God. And, and sometimes when you're there, you feel like you're, you're having an experience like these three disciples are. You feel like, man, it's all so very close to me, and it's all so very clear to me, and you're really enjoying it. And Peter says, it's, it's good to be here. I like this. And, and that's how all of us feel on the mountain. And so Peter went on to say this, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. The Bible says, he said this, uh, he, for he wist not or did not know what to say, for they were so afraid. Of course, they were, they were, there was some fear in them because they were seeing something amazing. But Peter understood that it's good to be here. And he says, let's make three tabernacles. What is a tabernacle? Well, a tabernacle is uh, this particular word is translated out into a movable tent. It's a place to, to go into and stay, in other words. Peter says, this is such a good place. We need some shelter here so we can stay here. This is where I want to be. And every Christian is, I'm sure, is like that when we're up on that mountain, when everything is just smooth sailing, when the, the presence of God feels so very near, when everything is going so, uh, so super great and swell. And Peter's like, it's good to be here. I like this. Let's make some places to stay up here. I really, really like this. And if, if it wasn't enough to uh, see Jesus' clothing becoming exceeding white as snow, if that wasn't enough, then they seen Moses and Elijah. But then if that wasn't enough, notice what the seventh verse says. It says, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them. 
And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear Him. Now they hear the voice of Almighty God telling them, This is my beloved Son. Hear Him. You know, that's an amazing thing. And, and I mean, my goodness, what, what an experience. I've never audibly heard the voice of God. Um, I feel like I'm pretty confident I know the voice of God in my heart when, when my heart hears it. Um, but I've, I've never audibly heard it, and I don't think anyone here has either. But, but these men did, and what a great experience. But you know, here's the thing. They, they couldn't stay on that mountaintop. They wanted to, but while it was great to be on that mountaintop, when you're on the mountaintop, it's easy to forget the people that are suffering. It's easy to lose sight of the fact that there is a real world out there that is hurting and going through things. And it's just not a possible thing to stay on the mountain all the time. You know, he wanted to build a tabernacle and stay there. But... You know, the Bible says in the 14th verse, And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and scribes questioning with them. You know, they came down off the mountain there. If we were to, to move forward in Peter's life, we would see a man that was um, imprisoned in the early church. He was put in jail. And, of course, the, the history tells us that Peter... Um, that he was crucified upside down, he and his wife, um, for preaching the gospel for their faith. Being on the mountain is great and it's wonderful. And by all means, we should enjoy when we are on the mountain. But while we are on the mountain, we must remember it came to pass. The mountain won't last forever. Because I think what happens a lot of times, and I know it's happened to me, is that when you get off the mountain and you find yourself back down in that valley, you know, when you're on the mountain, you feel impervious and you feel like, you know, well, I'm, I'm always going to feel like this now. I've learned something new. I've seen something new about God. My faith has grown and you, you feel like all that, and you're like, I've got this all the time now. This is no problem. You forget, and I forget, that it's going to come to pass that we will not stay there all the time. And, and then when we get down into the valley of despair, well, the valley of despair becomes even bigger because we forgot to remind ourselves of the practicality of life. We forgot to remind ourselves that, hey, I'm not going to be on this mountaintop all the time. You know, great, great men like Peter and James and John, they couldn't stay on that mountain even though perhaps they wanted to. They didn't stay on the mountain throughout their life. Yes, there was times they were on the mountain, but there was times that they were down in a great valley. And so we, we must remember that. Now, looking at this valley, um, we turn now to the sixth psalm to look at the valley. Because I, I think it's... It, it's important for us to see what kind of despair a believer can get into. Um, like I said, the, the mountaintop is great and it's wonderful. It is absolutely just, just great to be on the mountain. But it comes to pass. And at some point, we will find ourselves back in the valley as well. The sixth psalm was a psalm written by David. Um, there is not an exact date ascribed to this psalm. Some people feel like that it was later in David's life, but you, there's, there's nothing that I found that really proves that. Um, you can't really tie this psalm to any one particular sin, and I think that's important as we'll, we'll get into this here in just a moment. Um, 
So what can it feel like for someone to be down in the valley? We, we love the mountaintop experience, but what can it feel like when someone's in a valley? Well, let's see how David felt. He wrote in Psalm 6, he said, O oh Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O oh Lord, for I am weak. O oh Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. Let's stop reading right there for just a moment. Again, from what I have read, um, I don't think anybody can tie this 100% to any one particular sin. And I, and I want to use that as an example in this message for a purpose. Because when you're on the mountain, everything's great, everything's wonderful. But boom, when you find yourself down in the valley, if you do not remind yourself when you're on the mountain that, hey, this, this mountain will come to pass and, and I will be in a place where I'm, I'm battling and fighting and struggling again. If we're not reminded of that when we get in, when we're on the mountaintop and we get into the valley, then it's easy to look at ourselves and say, okay, a day ago, two days ago, three days ago, I was, I was on such a spiritual high. I felt absolutely great in the Lord. What happened to me? Why am I here? And then you can begin to think within yourself, I must have done something wrong. I don't know what it was, but I must have done something wrong. Now, David here does not give a specific sin. And like I said, from what I have studied, no one can 100% nail this psalm to a particular sin. Is there something that David did uh, and he's crying out to God for that? Perhaps. Perhaps so. But he is in a place right now that is very dark, as we'll see as we get more into this psalm. And he is crying out to God, O oh Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. That is not the words of someone on a mountaintop. It's not. And David is saying, have mercy on me. I am weak. You know, when, when you're, you're battling and things are difficult and things are hard, Sometimes you feel really, really weak. You feel weak. And he says, oh, Lord, heal me for my bones are vexed. In the third verse, he says, my soul is also sore vexed. But thou, oh, Lord, how long? He is in this place and he knows that God can lift his soul and his emotion and his mind out of this place that he is in. And he, he says, you know, my soul is sore vexed. It's, it's, it's down in my soul that I feel this. And in the deep valley of despair that we can get ourselves into, coming down off of a mountain into a place of struggle, into a place of spiritual battle, we can feel it in our soul. My soul is sore vexed, very vexed. It is, it is very, very tired and wore out from this battle. And he says, but thou, O Lord, how long? He's asking God, God, how long do I have to stay here? How long do I have to be here? And he says, return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. Now, it's easy, and, and I don't know that David's doing this. I'm just using this as an example. It's easy for us to forget about the practical ebb and flow of life. It's easy for us to listen. You know, I don't know if you guys ever heard this growing up, but I heard it growing up. Um, and, I, well, I've heard it even after I was saved to a certain degree. And, you know, I had to, to study and learn for myself that this isn't true. But, you know, I heard growing up and I heard it even afterwards that, you know, if, if you're living the way God wants you to live, well, you're just going to be all right on top of the world and everything's going to be going great. I got news for you. That is a lie. That is a lie. That is so stupid. I hate to put it like that, but it is. Was, was Paul living in a bad place when he was martyred for the gospel? Was Peter? Was John when he was boiled in oil and exiled to an isle of Patmos? You know... Some people would say, you know, 
You're down in the dumps because you're not where you're supposed to be. And that can be true. But when we, with a sound mind, a healthy mind, a sober mind, as the Bible says, that is a, a mind that is thinking clearly in accordance with the Word of God, when we evaluate our life, and of course we all know we're not going to be perfect, but we can say, okay, I'm not perfect, but I've not purposely went out and sinned against God. David is crying out as someone who has went out and purposely sinned against God. Did he? I don't know. But you see, when we are not practical in our thinking, on the mountain, when we get to the valley, we can get to a place where we think God must be punishing me. And that may not necessarily be the case because it comes to pass. We don't always stay in those situations. Um, you know, David, he, he feels like he's just dying. He says in the fifth verse, For in death there is no remembrance of thee, in the grave who shall give thee thanks? And, and listen to what he says, and we can see the place that he is in is a place of deep despair. Now, it is believed by a lot of people that David probably suffered from mental illness. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't know. But I know that he is in a very difficult place. He says in the sixth verse, he says, I am weary with my groaning. He says he's, he's groaning so much within that he's tired of it. I'm weary with my groaning. He says, all the night I make my bed to swim. Now, in just a second, well, right after that, he says, I water my couch with tears. I don't know if he's saying that he is crying in his bed and then crying, you know, crying at night and crying at day, or if the phrase, all the night I make my bed to swim, is referring to the fact that he can't sleep. He's tossing and he's turning. I, either way around, it's not a good place to be in. He says, I water my couch with tears. You know, he, he's crying. He is just tore up deep down inside. He says, mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of all my enemies. He is in a very, very difficult place. Now, we get in places where it's hard. We get in places where the battle is, is tough, where the world, uh, it feels like we're, we just keep getting bombarded with temptation after temptation, where the enemy is there firing uh, his flaming arrows, and where we just feel like we are in a spiritual funk. And we think, my goodness, what happened to me? What happened to me? I was here a day ago, a month ago, a year ago. I was in this wonderful place, and now I am in a place that's so far removed. What can I do? Well, you know, the, the main thing is always to just hold, you know, Brother Mickey, men like Brother Mick, and Brother Roger Lavender and, and men like that, they say things that are, are short and sweet, but they have deep, deep meaning in them. And one thing that Brother Mick always used to tell people, he would say, just hold on. Just hold on. You could be having a great day, and Mick would shake your hand, and he'd say, just hold on. When I got saved, he told me, just hold on. Many times after church, shaking my hand, he'd say, just hold on. You know, I remember those words. Just hold on. And the difficulties that come, just hold on. And that's what we need to do. But we remember, when we are here, just as if we are on the mountain, we remember that the mountain comes to pass, and there is a valley ahead of us. While we are in the valley, we must remember that the valley will come to pass, and there is a mountain that I am going to be climbing up before too awful long. You see, David here is a man that is obviously very, very upset. Now let's turn to the ninth psalm. And I'm getting ready to come to a close. Psalm 9, David says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. 
Sounds like someone who's on a mountain, don't you? What happened? It came to pass. It came to pass. The point of this message is for us to remember that there are ups and downs. There's times of great blessing on the mountain. There's time of learning and struggle in the valley. And they come to pass. God uses the mountain to bless us and make us grow. God uses the valley to teach us and make us grow. But they come to pass. If you're here tonight and you're on a mountain, you know, enjoy that. But remember that there will be a battle. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but a battle will be coming. And then when you get in that battle, remember, well, that battle's going to pass. It's going to be over. And I'm going to be on a mountain. And if you're right now in that valley, and things are difficult, and things are hard, and you, you feel wore out. You now I remember the old gospel song, um, Take My Hand, Precious Lord. Uh, and the, the song that says, you know, I am weak, I am tired, I am worn. You know, I felt like that many times in my life, and I'm sure you have too. And the songwriter knew exactly what we're talking about here tonight. When they said, I am weak, I am tired, I am worn. You know, David was weak, tired, and worn, worn in that sixth psalm. But then when we get to the ninth psalm, well, we see something completely different. We see someone who's come up on the mountaintop again. You know, this, this isn't necessarily the, uh, a shouting and, and uh, everything type of message, but it's a practical message that we, we need to remember because the understanding that when I'm on a mountain, I will one day be back in the valley is important for us while we're on the mountain. So that when we hit that valley, we can look back and we can say, okay, I knew that I was going to be here. And then when we are in there, we can say, I know I'm coming out of it. Our memories of those things are so important. Peter, James, and John were there on that mountain with Jesus. They'd seen amazing things, and then they heard the voice of our Heavenly Father say, This is my beloved Son. Hear Him. It wouldn't be too awful long after that that the disciples would scatter, leave Jesus, and Peter would deny Him. And then, resurrection morning, the women would come and tell the disciples, and they wouldn't believe. It's important to remember things and look back on them. You know, apparently the disciples didn't do that. They, in that morning, those three days of, of despair, that morning, the grief that they were going through, they forgot that man that shone as white as snow. They forgot the two Old Testament heroes that were talking to him. And they forgot the voice of the Father coming out of the cloud. They forgot that mountaintop experience where they were down in the valley and it led to even deeper despair. And you know, we don't want that in our life. We want to, um, we know that things will be difficult, but we don't want to make them more difficult by not understanding that I'm going to come out of this. And while we're on the mountain, we don't want to go into it not prepared, understanding that, hey, I'm going to be in a fight eventually, but I'm going to hang on and I'm going to look at what God has done for me and that's going to get me through as we close in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Um, God, we thank you for the word. Lord, please use this, God, to bless and help your people. God, may, may all glory go to you. May all glory go to your Son, to the Holy Spirit. And God, as we go our separate ways tonight, we just ask you, Lord, to uh, bring us back safely Sunday. God, we praise you above everything, thanking you most of all for your Son, Jesus, God. Uh, Lord, we look to his return and God, we just praise you, and we ask it all in the name of your Son, and amen.